Greetings. Welcome to day three of my Advent Reflections on the Gospel of St. Luke. I'm David. As Catholics, we are all familiar with praying the Hail Mary. But what exactly do we mean by Hail Mary anyway? One definition of Hail is to greet or summon someone or something by calling out to the person. It is used to get someone's attention, like hailing a cab. It would be as if the angel Gabriel greeted Mary by saying, Hey, you, Mary. I'm quite certain the angel Gabriel did not greet Mary this way. And considering the angel's greeting, a better definition of hail would be this, to greet with enthusiastic approval. This makes more sense. The angel Gabriel was about to ask Mary the most important question any human being had ever been asked, if she would be the mother of the Savior. It was a joyful event. So Mary deserved a joyful greeting. This joy is reflected in the Eastern Orthodox form of the Hail Mary. And they say, Rejoice, Mary full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, for you have given birth to the Savior of our souls. Now let's look at the scripture passage from the Gospel of St. Luke, the birth of Jesus foretold. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel greeted Mary, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. Mary was perplexed by the, these words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary asked the angel, How can this come about, since I do not have relations with man? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, that it be done unto me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Imagine that an angel appeared to a teenage girl today with this shocking news. You are going to have a baby, although you are a virgin and unwed. Think of how most people would handle such a large, life-changing decision. Imagine if Mary had acted like most of us would. Mary could have told the archangel, Let me have some time to think about this. I'll get back with you in a couple days. I need to talk this over with my parents, consider the pros and cons. I also need to run this by Joseph. Can you get back with me sometime soon? But Mary simply said, Yes. And she rejoiced to participate in God's plan. How many of us have such trust in God? When you feel in your heart the prompting of the Holy Spirit, do you immediately respond or do you hesitate? Mary realized the potential problems involved in the mission for her life, yet she did not voice any concerns or protests. The law of Israel is written in Deuteronomy Chapter 22 states, If a man marries a girl who is claimed to be a virgin and then finds out that she is not, they shall bring the girl to the door of her father's house and there they shall stone her to death. So Mary knew the punishment she was facing, stoning. All that she had going for her was an unbelievable story about an angel. What would her parents think? What would Joseph say? When the angel appeared to her, it would have been understandable if Mary had declined or at least hesitated. But Mary calmly trusted that if this was God's plan for her, it must be the best plan. 
This tells us something about Mary's relationship with God. Her faith was obviously deep enough for her to offer herself as a willing servant, and she offered herself as a joyful servant. If we as Catholics are going to effectively evangelize the world, we must follow the example of Mary. When people see us, they must see a person willing to act as a humble servant and a person filled with joy. Joy should be the mark of a true Christian. When we act as humble servants, not frowning and with reluctance, but joyfully, we impact others in an amazing way. Whatever we are doing, whether going out of our way to help someone in need, making an extra effort to help out around the house, staying late at work to help a colleague, or getting up early in the morning to go to church, we should do so with joy. Holy Mass should be a very joyful and reverent experience. The rosary should be prayed with joy. Each of us should be filled with joy, even in the face of the most difficult circumstances. Many people find happiness based on the external events in their lives, like a promotion at work, a favorite sports team wins a championship, getting a gift from a friend, even getting a good grade on a test. The joy that God is calling us to is a different from happiness. This joy and peace comes from within, starting with a trust in God and opening our hearts to the Holy Spirit. Our joyful attitude will stay with us even in the face of trials. Before giving Mary the message that her whole world would be shaken up and that she would face new unexpected and challenging trials, the angel told her to rejoice. Perhaps it was because of Mary's attitude of humble service that God selected her as the one most highly favored among women. Mary was a joyful and humble servant. It was appropriate that God chose this obedient teenage girl to be the mother of his son. The child she would bear would later offer himself as the greatest act of servanthood ever. In our next show we will look at the journey Mary makes to help her relative Elizabeth who is six months with child and advanced in age. So Stay tuned. We'll see you next time, and God bless all of you.